Many iconic characters have blessed the Mortal Kombat history over the last 30 years. From memorable protagonists such as Liu Kang and Johnny Cage, to villains such as Shao Kahn and Shang Tsung, the former team at Midway and current team at Netherrealm built a robust roster that has spanned the better part of three decades. But make no mistake about it, nothing defines Mortal Kombat more than the ninjas. Even those with little to no familiarity with the series, Sub-Zero and Scorpion are two of the most legendary characters in gaming history. Their initial appearance in Mortal Kombat 1, no, this Mortal Kombat 1, created the base upon which the series would grow. From the surface level, a ninja who freezes stuff and another who throws a spear is nothing groundbreaking. But the iconic lines such as GET OVER HERE and COME HERE paired with their blood feud help boost their recognition. Couple those factors with the game's gore and mysterious backstories for the characters, and you have a series that can survive three decades, regardless of some of its lower points. Beyond Scorpion and Sub-Zero, the team behind Mortal Kombat knew what it had with the ninjas, even hiding a third named Reptile in the game as a secret character. Since Mortal Kombat 1, the series has seen six additional ninjas join the roster, and today, I'm ranking them all, from S, which is the best, to D, which is the worst. Before we begin, those who frequent my community page have been voting where they rank each ninja leading up to this video. For perspective, the 9 polls have received over 150,000 votes, which is absolutely insane. As I rank each character, I'll show you where that ninja ranked on the community tier list. Also, for my criteria, I've assessed these ninjas based on 4 metrics. Design, moveset, finishing moves, and backstory. Keep in mind that this is my personal ranking, so feel free to put yours in the comment section below so we can discuss it. Now, let's get to the tier list. Scorpion. We are kicking this tier list off with the most memorable character in Mortal Kombat history, which simply cannot be argued. In case the intro did not make it clear, Scorpion represents the heart of the series. He debuted as a mysterious ninja, with his MK1 bio theorizing his membership of a faction that opposes Sub-Zero. As we know, the series eventually unveiled that the original Sub-Zero allegedly ordered the elimination of Hanzo Hisashi and the Shirai Ryu. Scorpion utilized his spot in the Mortal Kombat tournament to exact vengeance on his bitter rival. The series retconned this plot point later, revealing that the sorcerer Quan Chi was responsible for the extermination. His moveset is nothing short of memorable. Everything from the spear to the teleport punch was used on other characters in different ways throughout the series. Each game expanded his combos, finishers, and special moves. However, Nothing is more iconic than his classic Toasty Fatality, which remained a constant in almost every appearance. Just like his backstory and moveset, Scorpion's design is second to none. He is one of the few Mortal Kombat characters never to have a bad costume. The classic yellow ninja gear has seen multiple iterations over 30 years, and it truly reflects how cool the character is. Although he's technically appeared in fewer games than Liu Kang and Sub-Zero, Scorpion is Mortal Kombat. He only missed the original Mortal Kombat 3 for reasons beyond anyone's comprehension, before Midway had no option other than to bring Scorpion back in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. No game is complete without Scorpion, and he even appeared in Injustice Gods Among Us, squaring off against DC's finest heroes and villains. I could go on for days, but for the sake of time, Scorpion goes into the S tier, and I won't hear any arguments to the contrary. The community cast over 14,000 votes for Scorpion, and the S tier votes unsurprisingly took the win with a whopping 83%. Sub -Zero. The tier list continues with Sub Zero, another staple in Mortal Kombat history. I don't know that the pair of Scorpion and Sub-Zero would have reached such astronomical heights without each other. Not only has the Lin Kuei Warrior appeared in the most Mortal Kombat games, but the character itself has undergone many changes, including a complete identity swap between Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2. A warrior named Bi Han assumed the Sub-Zero codename for the first game's tournament, but Scorpion eliminated him, 
which led to the creation of another ninja we will cover later. In Mortal Kombat 2, Bihan's younger brother, Kwai Liang, assumes the role of Sub-Zero and continues that trend in many games after. Later on down the line, Mortal Kombat Mythology's Sub-Zero marked the return of Bihan as Sub-Zero, exploring the character's history and deepening the lore. Bihan became Sub-Zero once again in Mortal Kombat 1, but Kwai Liang portrayed Sub-Zero for the majority of the series. He even became Cyber Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat 2011, which was really cool to see. Although his moveset is fairly standard, nothing beats freezing an opponent and delivering a satisfying uppercut or follow-up combo. As you'd expect, most of his moves are ice-based, which does not offer much variety, but that's only a minor knock against him. You have the Ice Ball, Slide, Ground Freeze, Ice Shower, and Ice Clone. For his finishers, I don't think there's a more impactful fatality in the game's history than the classic Spine Rip. It stands alongside Scorpion's Toasty in the upper echelon, and he's had many other memorable finishers. Sub-Zero's designs have remained mostly consistent throughout the series, except for a few. The Mortal Kombat 3 Kwai Liang look sticks out as pretty bad, with a close runner-up being the alternate costume in Deception. Even so, his looks in Mortal Kombat 2, UMK3, Trilogy, and all recent entries have been near perfect. Like Scorpion, Sub-Zero's status earned him an appearance as a DLC character in Injustice 2, which seems somewhat of a seal of approval on Mortal Kombat characters. With so few knocks against Sub-Zero, I'm placing him firmly in S tier alongside his bitter rival. 22,000 community members participated in the Sub-Zero poll, which saw the S tier win with 73% of the votes. Reptile is up next, and while Scorpion and Sub-Zero are unquestionably S tier, the rest of this list is truly up in the air. Reptile was the only other ninja to appear in the original Mortal Kombat, and his debut set the stage for secret characters in the series. He was the first hidden character in Mortal Kombat history. Players had to solve an elaborate list of clues to fight him, and he did not receive a backstory until the second game. He became an official character in Mortal Kombat 2, a lizard disguised as a human ninja. The development team put some incredible work into Reptile. You could catch glimpses of his lizard form, primarily when he would perform his acid spit attack. His race later became known as Zetaran, and he was named Sizoth. Working under the rule of Shang Tsung in the first game and Shao Kahn in MK2, Reptile hoped to save the Zetaran race from slavery and potential extinction. This storyline would remain consistent for the character. Unfortunately, most MK stories failed to do Reptile justice, despite how cool of a character he is. Although, he did act as a vessel for Onaga in Mortal Kombat Deception, and the recent MK1 story redeemed Reptile nicely. From a moveset perspective, the Zetaran has a lot to offer. He's got a Force Ball, Acid Spit, Slide, and Invisibility at his core, with some others joining throughout the series. Reptile's fatalities are also great, especially the classic Tasty Meal, where he eats his opponent's head. His Acid Puke finisher is also great. Getting down to the design is where Reptile takes a bit of a hit. MK1, MK2, and UMK3 slash Trilogy are all absolute S tier costumes. I'm sure many people enjoy the full Zetaran lizard look, but I've never been a fan. Although his alternate look is great, the primary MK4 look does nothing for me, or for Reptile. The same goes for his appearance in Deadly Alliance. From Armageddon on, Reptile's designs were mostly good, especially in MK1 which I believe is the best attempt at a Ninja Raptor hybrid. Overall, Reptile is great from top to bottom. Is he on the same level as Scorpion and Sub-Zero? That's a tough question to answer. Although I don't think he is as iconic, I can look past his lackluster story and costumes to the character at his core and give him a warranted S tier ranking. The Reptile poll drew 18,000 votes and the S tier won with 62% of those votes. With three ninjas ranked in the S tier, 
we move from one secret ninja character to another with Smoke. Debuting in Mortal Kombat 2, not much was apparent about Smoke, other than you had to trigger a Toasty on the Portal stage to fight him. Even then, this mysterious ninja shrouded in clouds of smoke did not see any character development until Mortal Kombat 3. Later on, it's established that Smoke is an assassin for the Lin Kuei. After failing to assassinate Shang Tsung, Smoke returns to Earthrealm only to learn of the Lin Kuei's intentions to turn their best warriors into cyber ninjas. Despite his attempts to escape, Smoke fails and joins Sektor and Cyrax under the codename LK7T2. Further down the line, Smoke would join forces with Noob Cybot against his will, creating Noob Smoke, one of the most underrated duos in MK history. He returned in ninja form in Mortal Kombat 2011, where the game unveiled his full name, Tomas Verbata, before he returned once again as a member of the Lin Kuei in Mortal Kombat 1. Smoke's story is tragic, considering he was relegated to a cyber ninja for much of the original timeline. Still, he made the story work regardless. Not many characters have spent equal time as a human ninja and a cyber ninja, so that's unique. His moves were excellent from Mortal Kombat 2 through Armageddon, especially when he had his Scorpion Spear and later his Cyber Ninja Chest Spear. In later games, he would incorporate more smoke-based attacks into his arsenal. As for his finishers, I'll leave this clip here and say nothing more on the matter. Fatality. Considering his consistent changes between human and cyborg form, Smoke's design is challenging to assess. I love his looks in the original timeline, and even MK9 I'm on board with, but I'm not a fan of his MK1 appearance, mainly because of the mask. I don't think Smoke has enough substance to rank him in the S tier, although I really want to. He is clearly a step below Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Reptile in my opinion, He's had a great run and should be a staple in every Mortal Kombat game, but I think he fits nicely into A tier. From a community perspective, 18,000 votes were cast for Smoke, and the S tier won with 66% of those votes. Noob Cybot. We have arrived at Noob Cybot one of the darkest and most complex characters in the entire series. Before we get into the analysis, for those who don't know, Noob Saibot's name comes from the original creators of Mortal Kombat, Ed Boon and John Tobias. Reverse Boon into Noob and Tobias into Saibot, and there you have Noob Saibot. The Dark Wraith Ninja made his first appearance alongside Smoke in Mortal Kombat 2 as a secret character. However, unlike Smoke, you had to win 50 consecutive matches, or 25 on the Sega Genesis, to fight Noob Saibot. Nothing was clear about the mysterious ninja, but the story would start to unfold in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. He worked within the Brotherhood of the Shadow, aligning with Shinnok, although this information would not surface until Mortal Kombat 4. He appeared again in Mortal Kombat 3 as a palette swap of Kano, and as a ninja in UMK3 and MK Trilogy. In Mortal Kombat Deception, it is finally revealed that Noob Saibot is Bihan, the former Sub-Zero who fell victim to a vengeful Scorpion. This story would repeat itself in MK9, and while his background is intriguing, the story never did Noob Saibot justice. Getting to the moveset, Noob Saibot has remained pretty consistent throughout his appearances. In UMK3 and Trilogy, he has the ultra-spammable Teleport Slam, the Shadow Throw, and the Disabler, which later was renamed to the Ghost Ball. As for his finishers, most are somewhat forgettable, but nothing is more revolting than the infamous Wishbone Fatality from MK9. Noob's costumes have remained consistently good throughout the series, and no, I'm not considering the Kano palette swap. Apart from that, in his alternate MK4 costume, Noob's simple design throughout the series encapsulates his dark and depraved nature. I haven't had many negatives to say about Noob Saibot, but I'd be lying if I said he wasn't an afterthought. Despite his dark backstory, he never seems to shine when given the opportunity in the spotlight, but that's mainly a writing issue. As a character, Noob has it all, 
but he's not as iconic as Scorpion, Sub-Zero, or even Reptile, meaning he lands an A next to Smoke. A Noob Smoke reunion, if you will. Noob Cybot fans showed up in full force in the community poll, with 64% voting the Wraith into the S tier. With 5 down and 4 remaining, we move to Ermac, the soul-harboring Red Ninja. Akin to Reptile in the original Mortal Kombat game, many believed Ermac existed as a secret character in the same game due to a hidden menu. Although Error Macros was simply a programming term, Ermac discussions remained intense, even earning a nod in Mortal Kombat 2. Eventually, Midway delivered the Red Ninja in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. His UMK3 bio described him as a character with a mysterious history, brought together by the souls of fallen warriors. Although Shao Kahn created him, he had no allegiance to the Emperor after his defeat in Mortal Kombat 3. He later teamed up with Zombie Liu Kang to take down Onaga before the timeline reset. Ermac became a villain again in the 2011 reboot, having been created by Shao Kahn. Other than crushing Jax's arms, he did not do much in that game. In MKX, he joins Kotal Kahn, but ultimately falls to Jackie Briggs, who exacted vengeance on her father's behalf. In MK1, Ermac's creator is now Quan Chi, but after his defeat at the hands of Molina, King Jared takes control of Ermac. As a master of telekinesis, Ermac has an impressive and memorable moveset. Beginning in MK3, his core attacks included the teleport punch, telekinetic slam, and force ball. He also had a few decent finishers, such as the telekinetic slams and pest control, but the rest are forgettable. Like Reptile earlier in the tier list, Ermac has had some rough redesigns over the years. I'm partial to the classic ninja look, but the developers felt he needed more of a mummy type look. Some of them are okay, but most just don't do it for me, especially in MK1. My favorites are UMK3, Deception, and MK11. The lore behind Ermac is excellent, and it's an example of how the series can turn a hoax into something. However, Ermac pales in comparison to the other ninjas from a storyline and design perspective. I love his concept and moves, but he's never had a great storyline. For those reasons, I'm landing Ermac in B tier. Unsurprisingly, the community loves Ermac, although this was much closer. 20,000 of you voted in the S tier one with 46%. The Prince of Adenia is up next, and his story is about as bizarre as any of the ninjas. He began as a joke, referencing the song Purple Rain by Prince. Players first spotted him in the attract mode of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 on the arcade. As a result, players desperately scrambled to find this mysterious purple ninja in-game. However, all efforts were futile, since Rain didn't exist in the arcade version. Instead, Rain debuted in console versions of UMK3 and later Mortal Kombat Trilogy. His bio told the story of an Adenian native smuggled away from his realm before ultimately becoming a traitor, joining Shao Kahn to avoid becoming a victim of the Emperor. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Rain's storyline developed significantly, learning of his Adenian heritage and that he is a descendant of the god Argus. It was also confirmed that Rain and the game's main characters, Taven and Dagon, were half-brothers, creating a power struggle. Rain's next notable appearance occurred in MK9, where he was a DLC character. This game slightly changed his story, making him an orphan raised under the protection of Adenia. He ultimately becomes arrogant, turns evil, and joins Shao Kahn once again. Rain returned again in MKX, but only as a character in the story mode. He aligns himself with Melina in her quest to take the throne from Kotal Kahn, despite planning to take it himself. MK11 brought Rain back as a DLC character, with his non-canonical ending expanding upon his lineage and feud with Argus, Dagon, and Taven. In the new MK1 timeline, Rain returns as an evil sorcerer with a new mage look. He joins Shang Tsung and General Shao in their attempts to overthrow the Outworld royal family, 
but Rain ultimately kind of redeems himself in the end. Getting to his moveset, Rain's water and lightning based attacks have become a staple. Although his costumes have changed consistently, his moves have remained mostly the same, with specials like the Mind Control Orb, better known as the Water Bubble, Roundhouse Kick, and Lightning. He's also had some pretty creative fatalities over the years. Rain's costume designs have changed considerably from his initial purple palette swap appearance. The developers leaned into his Prince background in Armageddon, but I believe his MK11 costume is superior, offering the best of both worlds. His look in MK1 had potential, but it's my least favorite of the bunch. The character has a dedicated fanbase, and it's easy to see why. The purple color, unique background, and the ability to control water is a fun concept. Seeing him back in MK1 was good, but the story did not do him justice, considering where he was in Armageddon and MK11. Overall, I think Rain is the perfect B-tier character. The community voted 18,000 times for Rain, and for the first time, a character landed in A tier with 53% of the votes. Fight. Chameleon. Chameleon is a character with so much potential, but almost zero payoff. Although he appeared in UMK3 on the Sega Genesis as an unfinished character, his official debut occurred in Mortal Kombat Trilogy for all platforms except for the N64. You could play as him fairly easily by holding these buttons after selecting any male ninja character. Once the match begins, Chameleon alternates between Scorpion, Smoke, Noob Cybot, Sub-Zero, Ermac, Rain, and Reptile. So I guess you could technically rank him in the S tier, because he is all ninjas rolled into one. But it won't be that easy. Sadly, unlike his female counterpart, Chameleon has no backstory in MK Trilogy, but is considered one of Shao Kahn's deadliest warriors. It is reasonable to assume that, like female Chameleon and Reptile, Chameleon is part of the Zatarin race, though this has never been confirmed. Chameleon made his second and only other appearance in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, mainly because it brought every character back to the franchise. However, his story remained a mystery, beyond mentioning that Chameleon has been around since the first Mortal Kombat game. Chameleon's moveset limits him to the moves and finishers of the other more prominent ninjas, so there's nothing unique here in that regard. This character has only seen two legitimate appearances in Mortal Kombat games. Apart from being slightly transparent in MK Trilogy, he would cycle through each palette swap ninja. Armageddon gave him a unique look, but overall, there is nothing inspiring from a design perspective. The non-MK diehards are inclined to forget that Chameleon even exists half the time. Personally, I love the concept, but there is simply not enough meat on these bones. Netherrealm would need to turn him around to boost him up the list, but for now, Chameleon settles into the D tier. The Chameleon poll received over 13,000 votes, and he was the only character to fall into the C tier with 44% of the votes. Tremor. Tremor. Last but certainly not least, we have the Earth Manipulating Ninja, Tremor. His first official appearance occurred in Special Forces, not the greatest of starts, but he was one of the only redeeming qualities of that game. Affiliated with the Black Dragon, Tremor debuted as a sub-boss before Jax defeated him in the game. Major Griggs. Tremor. Let us renew our acquaintance. Apart from a small cameo in the PSP version of MK9, Tremor's next appearance occurred in the MKX Combat Pack 2 DLC. Unfortunately, Mortal Kombat X did not develop Tremor much beyond what was already known. Tremor's moveset is unquestionably the best part of his character. He manipulates the Earth with attacks such as the Rock Drop, Ground Pulse, Rock Toss, Rolling Stone, Stone Shatter, and Earth Shake. He did have a few other moves in Special Forces and MK9, but those were primarily copied from other characters. His fatalities in MKX were okay, but his MK1 fatality is underwhelming. Design-wise, Tremor sported the classic palette swap in MK Special Forces and MK9, 
but MKX is where he arrived with a completely different look. In MK1, he returned to his ninja roots with the classic costume, but with more defined rock features. Like Chameleon, Tremor is one of the more overlooked ninjas from a story perspective. He's appeared more recently and does have some fun moves and costumes, but his backstory is severely lacking. Tremor is an excellent concept, but he lands in the C tier simply because he has so few appearances and a lackluster backstory. 18,000 people participated in the Tremor poll, and A tier won with 53% of the votes. Here's a look at my tier list versus the community tier list. What are your thoughts on my tier list? I tried to keep it honest from my assessment of each character. Although I may have weighted the story too heavily, I believe it's a significant reason why fans hold Scorpion and Sub-Zero in such high regard. Sure, Reptile snuck in with a cheeky S tier, but I don't think characters such as Smoke, Noob Cybot, Ermac, and Rain would have come around if the mystery of Reptile wasn't so prominent in the first game. In all honesty, I love each ninja in a different way, but there's a clear story discrepancy with some of them. Even Chameleon and Tremor are great concepts, but there is just no payoff. I enjoy the story and lore aspect of Mortal Kombat characters, so hopefully that explains my perspective a bit better. Feel free to roast me in the comments, but keep it civil. This video took me quite some time to put together, but I'll be back with another soon. Thanks for watching, and be sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you're into that sort of thing.